I know what you're thinking. It sounds like a crazy idea. Mainly because when you and I think about going on the keto diet, the first thing that comes to mind is doing so in an attempt to lose weight or to lose body fat. Definitely not treating psychiatric illness. There is a growing body of scientific evidence, however, which seems to suggest that actually, yeah, the keto diet could be beneficial in the treatment of psychiatric conditions like depression, anxiety, autism, as well as schizophrenia. So stay tuned and you never know, you might learn something new today on YouTube and wouldn't that be marvelous? Cause you know, who needs drama from the YouTube beauty community when you could watch my face, me instead. Hey there, welcome to another week of Dr. Tell Me Why, a health education channel where I teach you guys all about medicine, making medical knowledge accessible to a YouTube audience. If that sounds like your cup of tea or something that you want to see more of here on YouTube, then you should definitely subscribe and join my YouTube family. If you subscribe, I promise to teach you guys all about medicine and keep you very entertained while doing so. It's the two things that I'm really good at, medicine and entertaining people. Perfect harmony, if you ask me. Now to today's video. Boom, boom, boom. Actually, the idea that a high-fat, low-carb diet could be used in the treatment of psychiatric illness isn't exactly a really radical one. The ketogenic diet has been used since at least the 1920s in the treatment of treatment-resistant epilepsy, and the findings are very clear. The keto diet does wonders for epilepsy and can lead to a complete remission of seizures that don't typically respond to traditional medical treatment. Less clear, however, is just how it does that. One theory suggests that ketones like acetone, acetoacetate, and beta-hydroxybutyric acid, ketones that your body produces from the breakdown of fat, typically when there aren't any carbs around, can act to change the way that nerve cells communicate with one another by changing levels of vital neurotransmitters. The end result is a significant improvement in symptoms of psychiatric illness. In one landmark study, scientists were able to demonstrate that a ketogenic diet led to a dramatic improvement in depressive symptoms in mice, in a similar amount to that achieved with antidepressant drugs. And adult mice that had been fed a ketogenic diet while still tiny fetuses in the womb showed reduced susceptibility to illnesses like anxiety and depression when they grew up. I mean, even their brains were different. Their cerebellum was on average 4.8% larger when compared to mice that had been fed a normal diet while in the womb. In one study on autistic children, human this time, the keto diet was found to improve overall functioning as measured by the Childhood Autism Rating Scale. In fact, after several years on the diet, one autistic child saw his score decrease from 49 to 17 and saw his IQ increase by a whopping 70 points. It's thought that when implemented on an autistic or schizophrenic patient, a ketogenic diet can have anti-inflammatory effects on the brain by tweaking how energy is produced inside brain cells' mitochondria. So is this an endorsement of the ketogenic diet? Well, not really. For starters, I never tell you guys what to do. I just try and present the best information out there for you guys so you guys can make your own decisions. This is what this is. This is what this relationship is. <laughs> My YouTube analytics tells me that you guys are all grown up, so you can definitely make your own life decisions. And what you need to know is that there may be some hazardous health consequences to going on a keto diet. When going on a high fat, low carb diet, you're at an increased risk of developing a variety of different health conditions like constipation, menstrual abnormalities, gallstones, and even impaired liver function. It's also important to remember that although most of these studies showed very promising results, they're only very preliminary studies and many only looked at animal subjects like mice. Add on top of that the fact that in many of these studies, the mice were fed a 4 to 1 keto diet, where roughly 80% of the calories came from fat. I suddenly feel very ill. <laughs> the fact is, we need more research before we can comfortably recommend a ketogenic diet to patients suffering from psychiatric illness. I hate to say it, but, you know, we just don't have the data yet. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. Uh, <laughs> as much as I enjoyed making it. <laughs> if you liked this video, then don't forget to tell the YouTube algorithm that you did. 
You can do that by pressing the like button. What pressing the like button does is it tells the YouTube algorithm that you thought my video was worthwhile. So YouTube can then start recommending this video to other people who it thinks might also be interested in it. But if you really love this video and you want to see more of my adorable face and my terrible, terrible moustache, then you can definitely subscribe. Subscribing is the best way to keep tabs on all the great medical content that I have lined up for you guys. And also leave a comment below if you've had any experience with the keto diet and noticed any improvement in your mental health or well-being. I'm very keen to hear about your experiences. And now I guess it's time to bid you guys farewell. Goodbye. <laughs> See you next week. Wondrous for epilepsy and can lead to a completion... Completion? Complete remission. <laughs> ah.